This is Reality Dispatch by Jim Minns. It was an impromptu celebration at the Abbey that turned sour on the night Thomas betrayed the Queen. Elizabeth had arranged a wedding rehearsal and had chosen her good friend and musician Thomas Tallis to score the event. On the day in question, Tallis was struck with writer's block and explained as such to Her Majesty. Unfortunately for Tallis, the Queen took this slight as an attack on her desire to wed a Catholic, an act that would reconfigure the monarch's relationship with Rome. The Queen was unaware that Tallis had no such desire nor appetite for political statements. Generations of my family have supported you, and this is how you repay your country, your Queen, on the night I need you the most, Elizabeth said. Tallis was embarrassed and turned away from her gaze. Ever the perfectionist, he was also blessed with the uncanny ability to strike gold from the lips of God and transcribe his words into music, perfectly annotated and, when sung in tune and en masse, perfectly divine. He wondered ever briefly whether he could just face the page and force himself into action. However, deep down, he knew it was impossible to demand perfection to appease ego, even if that ego belonged to the monarch. On the altar of Westminster, the Queen turned her rehearsal into an inquisition and finally held court over Tallis and pronounced judgment. You are to be hung, drawn and quartered, Her Majesty declared to her guards, who were ever present. They arrested Tallis at the foot of the altar and led him out of the abbey and over to the Tower of London to await the carriage of his execution. As he left, the angelic ceiling above bore down on him a wave of insight, a cast of a shadow, and a glimmer of hope and comfort. It was a window into the afterlife that he felt deeply in his soul. The path to immortality, the warmth of paradise, the fate of a painful death to be ceased by the promise of eternal comfort. He yelled as loud as his lungs could muster, louder than the loudest pipes of the organ that was to grace the walls and ceilings in 400 years' time. I have it, your majesty. I have it. He was almost at the arched exit when the queen made her presence known, running up the aisle holding the dress above her ankles, so as not to trip. She had faith in her composer and was aware that he was not subject to such outbursts. She knew that even the fear of his imminent death would not cause him to pretend to have inspiration when there was none. Stop! I order! Stop! she declared, and her kingsmen did as they were commanded. What is it? she asked Talis. A window, your majesty. I saw a window. The same window I see whenever I am taken to a place where my hand inscribes the music on the page, but my mind is nowhere nearby. The angels take over my strokes, and when I awaken, the music is there on the page. I have seen the window just now, and God has moved the angels aside and has declared an intention to use me as a vessel to transcribe not just any piece, but the piece of music, something no one can understand or explain. It must be heard, he said. Can you hear the music? she asked. I have heard it, your majesty. I heard a glimmer of it in my mind as I was being led away. It frightens me. You must write it down for me. You must do this now. Release him, Elizabeth said as the guards let him go. On the floor of Westminster Abbey, two hours after he had been sentenced to death, Thomas Tallis lay beneath Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, and transcribed a tune he declared was spoken through him by the Almighty. The Queen summoned a choir in the middle of the night to read the music and to hear the tune. Three hours later, the music was ready to be performed, and the Queen sat on her throne in silent contemplation for many hours afterwards. 400 years later, an orchestra helmed by Ralph Vaughan Williams discovered the music in the archives of Thomas Tallis. Williams amassed the London Symphony Orchestra to perform the piece in Gloucester Cathedral. 100 years later, the piece was again performed by the BBC Symphony Orchestra at the same cathedral and can be heard in all its magnificence at the link above.
For more stories of fact-based fiction, head to jimmins.substack.com.